Reminds me of a, here's a name from the past a little bit. You remember Connor Barwin? Not really. He played for the Texans. He played for the Eagles. So or, if you saw him, you can you'd go. You could be the next Connor Barwin. <laughs> he might go, he and he'll do just what you did. Who? Oh yeah, what's up? It's Chris Sims. I'm buttoned. It's Monday. We are 11 days away from the draft. We are getting there. I have upgraded my host. Okay, <laughs> Ahmed didn't know Connor Barwin. This guy knows Connor Barwin. Uh, uh, Ahmed doesn't have muscles. This guy has <laughs> muscles. Ahmed doesn't have style. This guy's got style. Connor Rogers is here. What's up, bro? How you Dude, doing, man? Dude, thanks for having me. You know I love joining you, especially this time of year. Yeah. We get closer to the this draft. This is where our relationship started. One hundred percent. I see your rankings getting deeper and deeper every week <laughs> setting yeah. the internet on fire i at guess times. so i guess i really enjoy it all right it's well been thank awesome. you i try not to pay attention to too much of the internet i know a little bit of what's right. being said and going on out there it's but not just you if it makes yeah. you feel better every yeah. time i write a mock draft this is the worst mock draft i've ever seen yeah, this right. player You're comes an somewhere. yeah it's why fun. does nbc hire you right right right, 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 right. how do you that. do this for a living exactly yeah exactly. on and on it's what makes it really fun so what are you wearing today here let me hear about this shirt first off here just let me paint the picture we got tight sleeves on the guns are Showing the yeah. sun's out, so the guns are out. Rare, nice day. And we got the collar open. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little tie bar shirt right here. Uh, it is a little small, I will admit. Uh, so it's, yeah. uh, it's all right. it was Shoulders Day, so you you know you got to find something. You're, a little you're good. You're good. I don't. I wouldn't have said it's small. Now you do have me thinking, and we might have to make you stand up and see if you can raise your hands above your head. That's fair. And will By your belly show, button show? Uh, yeah, then then we'll we see. If your belly button <laughs> shows, then it's too small. You're then right. We have a little bit of problems. <laughs> yeah, crop. If it does you make it. Yeah, we're bringing the crop top back <laughs> um but no thanks for uh coming in Dude, as you always do holding it down for us and uh yeah i enjoy my conversations with you as always uh getting into this and uh, yeah man you're not connor barwin but you're damn no, I, you're damn good connor rogers look yeah, at that yeah trying to catch sleeves, up to the arms <laughs> same shoulders connor barwin is uh we talk about this florian and i all the time of like how many good players go by the wayside in NFL history where, you know, we forget about them if they're 100%. not in the Hall of Fame or not in our face, you know, constantly. And you go, damn, Connor Barwin, like what a damn good player he was for a while. I think I used my comp for him, right? And I know we're going to talk about some comps yeah. here in a little bit. Uh, you're the master of comps. Is Jonah Ellis uh, from Utah, right. right? The edge guy. I like That's kind of who he reminded me yeah. of. Um, and uh, yeah, I like Jonah Ellis as well. I mean, be interested actually to see where he ends up going. Uh, right. I kind of thought he was actually and didn't mean to do a curveball here. But I like it. I, I just thought like he was one of those guys where it was a pleasant surprise when I watched him, you know, has it all unbelievable playing play strength, unbelievably twitchy and explosive, yes. right? Variety Un of moves. Right. Really a variety of moves, yeah. right? Does he have the top notch ability to fly and bend around the edge? I mean, I'm not sure about that. I think that's where we're, but everything else was there. Right. Yes. Right. So, and Football, you, like you family. said, he had spin. You know, yeah. spin moves. He was a little more, uh, you know, educated in those departments. But like, I feel like I thought he'd be like a second roundish type of guy. And That's I, feel I have like him, and he's not going there. It doesn't seem like it, no, right? I mean, again, I, I loosely yeah. pay attention to yep. mock drafts and all that. Not everybody's, but I don't seem to see his name there in that area. So he worked out at his pro day, and he posted a six six nine three cone, which for the edge rushers. Far and away the most important Isn't, metric. Yes. I look at the 10-yard split, and I look at the three-cone. I think it's one of the best three-cones ever for an edge uh, rusher. I was going to say. So man. that might actually have a team go, wait, are we overthinking this guy's size? That type of athleticism shows up, for right. sure. In this league, too, where yeah. it's third down, and we don't care how small you are. We just put you in the NASCAR package yeah, and right. go. Right. Like, that's the kind of guy I really like. I, I have him. I think he's my fifth-ranked edge rusher in the draft. I, I hear that. He was yeah. almost my fifth. Yeah. He, he was him and a few other guys that yep. I kind of went back and forth with, and I actually copped out and just went with the top four and then threw a bunch of names out as five because there was a few guys I liked there that I kind of wanted to give a love to. But he was definitely one of my favorite ones. It's funny what you evaluate, too, when you look at players because he's smaller he's 6'2 he's 248 he I talked to him at the combine he's this guy that's put on but, but weight. what's hilarious though see this is what I love about the draft and don't don't forget yeah. your thought yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I got it because we go ooh, 6'2 248 yet the guy everybody thinks is going at number eight is 6'3 247 and there's no big deal about it 100 it's and amazing that's what, to me I Pete hears me say this all the time where I go like we nitpick certain guys for something else and then we give us another guy a free pass and you go yes. it's the same Thing, all the time except we're just not going to talk about it with this guy uh okay go ahead no with the rest of your thought I, there. it's perfect because i could piggyback yeah. off of that he's still got 11 inch hands he's got right. massive you hands could, his Those, hand fighting was incredible and he plays great with his hands right. so you need to really pick what matters to you yeah like i don't care anymore when pass rushers are, are short i just yeah. don't care anymore right do you right. have good hands 
Do you know how to use your arm length? Are you strong? Can you win with leverage? It's interesting what we start to not care about anymore, and I think yeah. that's trending that way. Yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah. I mean, so. he, he's bottom line good football player. Really good. I think that's the the big thing you want. You go. Hey, he's a guy that can he can play on my defense any day of the year. Uh, we'll see where he goes. That'll be interesting. We'll see where this whole thing goes. All right. So, what do you want to start? You want to start with these wide receivers right off the bat? Yeah, let's do it because yeah. we got player comps. Yeah. And, you know, something we were talking about before the show was just player comps can go so many ways. Mm-hmm. It can be body typing, athleticism, play style. It can be range of outcomes. Like, there's going to be wide receiver comps I have on here where I'm like, this is his best version of him. I hear you. It doesn't right. mean, right. hey, walks into the NFL and you're A.J. Green today. Right. Like, that. that's why it's so hard when you just, you know, post the graphic. And yep. it's like player comp. Right. There's so many varieties and routes to get to how a player I is compared. Agreed. It could be what he might be at one day, what he reminds yeah. you of right now, right? I, I, I'm a little bit more of when I do player comps of, like, more of I try to keep it in the lines. And I don't do it for every guy like you do. Yeah. But keep it along the lines of like his body and the way he moves reminds me of this guy. Which is probably right? the best, the closest way to That's do it. That's what I try to yeah. do. And then I try to think, okay, wait, oh, he reminds me of that guy. Wait, are there other guys that are like that that are maybe a better version of that or a lesser version of that? And that's kind of what I try to do. And at times, you know, you come away and you go, damn, this guy reminds me of somebody that I can't remember who it is or I can't it won't come to my brain and then you write something else down maybe you know just again and just a thought or what this guy could be or whatever but uh you're right it's it's an interesting discussion always and uh that's kind of how I usually approach it is what the guy reminds me of and then what I think he can be in the NFL exactly and uh we'll, we'll see where that combo goes here right I think it's the best way to paint a picture for the fans of like this is what you drafted this is what you hope you're getting and we're going to look at the wide receivers right now and there's definitely some really rich comparisons I mean some of these are best possible outcomes so the top Marvin Harrison Jr. I I see AJ Green the way he wins with his length the way he comes back to the ball I hear that I I think the speed from 20 to 40 is better than the speed from 0 to 10 got you which is almost the opposite when you look at Malik Neighbors to DJ Moore, which when you look at their testing, their jumps, their explosiveness, it's almost identical. Well, yeah, they're freaks. Freaks. And right. that zero to 10 is right. in a different universe exactly. of how you get them the ball in space or right. how you use them over the top. Right. So, I mean, AJ Green and DJ Moore, they're very rich comparisons, but I think it also speaks to how special this wide receiver class is. I, listen, I, 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 the Malik neighbors, DJ Moore, Jamar Chase, I've used Odell Beckham Jr. type of explosion when I've yeah. talked about him. You know, the ability to stick the foot in the ground and explode out of it it's it's special nonetheless and i think you're you're explaining that right with the with the dj moore stuff too people still don't realize how awesome dj moore is i think on a national capacity right right i think that people are slowly learning i even had a conversation about this the other day with a coach because they were hey the, you know these guys are kind of in a class of their own that's what they were talking about we were talking receivers and i went i think i'd put dj moore in that class too and they went yeah, I, you know, I don't ever. I haven't watched the Bears. I haven't really seen him the last. I haven't yeah. seen him the last. And I was like, well, I'll be here to tell you, he's of the class of Jamar Chase and those guys. Uh, so I'm with you there. The one, the Marvin Harrison Jr. one. That's the interesting one, and I think that's where the debate is a little bit with that, right? Yeah. Because I don't know if I see the same explosion of AJ Green. Right. Right. I certainly think he's a really good football player, and know he can do everything that way. The guy I kind of used a little bit in one of mine was like Michael Thomas, right? I yeah. kind of looked at it in some ways and went, wait, I don't know if I think he's as explosive as A.J. Green, but I think he can play big slot and do some of that at a really high level and almost be a Michael Thomas Jr. type of guy, maybe with even a little more outside value than Michael Thomas Jr. had, right? But if he has A.J. Green type of explosion, that would make me think differently of him, and then he was definitely going to kick some ass in the NFL. You know what's funny with Green, because yeah. I agree with you how yeah. explosive he was on tape. He was such an average tester, which is I had to look back at this. This is, when you brought up Connor Barwin this is the time of year where I go back to like players that right. played like 10 15 yeah, yeah. years ago right. I mean Green was a guy 34 and a half inch vertical 36 percentile I mean the 10 yard split 155 50 yeah. like he wasn't different what was his top what was his 40 448 448 damn yeah it's, it's slower sh- than I would have thought but like I mean he's somebody I got yeah. to see play in person yeah when he was with Cincinnati and it didn't look like that it definitely did I, he had incredible quick feet that's the other thing about AJ Green for his length he had arms were his insane. ability to be do this and Gosh, I would have thought it was faster than four four eight. So I think four four. I like watched a lot inches. of days or a lot of games yeah. with him and Matthew Stafford down there in Georgia in those years. And uh, yeah, I'm actually shocked to hear it four four eight. Um, but but yeah, that I, I I I hear you there. Marvin Harrison Jr. to me is to me going to be one of the 
wrinkles, j- jokers, jack of all trades of the first 10 picks, right? I mean, I do think more of the league has neighbors as the number one receiver. I wouldn't be right? shocked. I, now, now, Harrison, we've discussed here a little bit. He's a safe, good pick. The floor is high. The ceiling's pretty high, too, right? I don't think it's as high as neighbors or maybe even a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. in yeah. my eye. But either way, like, he is definitely a safe pick. So where does he go, right? That's to me, like, when I think about Marvin Harrison Jr. and I think forward to the Cardinals, I go, I could see that. Monty Austin Ford, the GM there, came from New England. They might be into just, hey, we just want to get a safe, make sure this pick works type of thing, right? Right. Or are they going to go with a neighbors who I think is more physically gifted and all that, but maybe not as safe? Uh, that, that's going to be interesting to me. I'm going to be interested to see how this Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik Neighbors thing shakes out. And then what happens to them if, if four and five want to trade out? And then you're looking at it and you're going, well, with the Giants, if they get jumped for all the quarterbacks, they have to take one of them. Right. But then Tennessee, how do they value the top tackle versus the top receiver? Are you a believer why we're sitting there on that comment there? Do you think that the Giants are going to be in the the quarterback combo here? I think in the right situation. Yeah. I think that they would, if New England does not want to take one, then the Giants are a great trade partner because you're only moving back to six. Yeah, right. That's what makes them so attractive. Right. The Giants have to look at it like this, right, where – are they going to be bad again this year, no matter what, in a quarterback class that I believe next year will be thinner than this one, where, like, do you have to get the guy now? Because Dable and Shane, I think their job security is fine, but it's the NFL. You're always thinking about the long term. I think they would be willing to move into three for somebody maybe physically gifted like Drake May. I don't know what I make of the McCarthy rumors to them. That's really interesting to me. I've always liked Michael Penix for them, but I, I had heard that I think a lot of teams like the Giants love the idea of Penix at the top of round two, mm. and then they realize those days are gone. Yeah, it's not happening. Those, that's not happening. Right. Like, there's a reason why Penix is taking private you know, workouts with the Vikings and teams the like Raiders, that, because he's going right. in the first round. Sure, right. So, which he should. Which he sh- absolutely yeah, should. I'm right. with you on that. He's yeah. my QB3. Yeah. So, th- that's yeah, I think it's real, but I think the Giants will also be – a little careful where like you look at 11 through 13 Vikings Broncos Raiders I think they they sell they would sell their franchises to come up for one I don't yeah. think the Giants would do that I I, I hope not I, I don't me, think they should by the way I mean, yeah I, I mean the the quarterback conversation to me with the Giants uh, that, that that I just I don't get it I don't get it I'm just gonna say that right off the bat I don't and I think that you know Brian Dayball and and you know um no I was gonna say Brandon Bean Joe Shane are they're playing with fire, in my opinion, if they go that route. They really are. I mean, again, the Giants, no, we're expecting a step forward, right? It shouldn't look like last year. It definitely shouldn't, okay? Uh, I, they got a, they've had a number of problems with the roster like we've talked about, and Daniel Jones is way down the list for the problems, in my opinion. So they're going to do that here and where you say, yeah, they're not in the hot seat year. I get that, but – Wait, we're going to draft a quarterback, and now we're going to have Drew Locke and Daniel Jones, and we're going to have the New York media talking about the quarterback in the locker room every day. And then, okay, now you're in danger of uh, you might go 5-12 and now because now you're a distraction. Who knows what the hell is going to happen with the football team? And now your ass is going to be on the hot seat. So that's where I just don't understand that thought altogether, right? Uh, and we'll, we'll hit on more of that here in a minute I, because I, we, we want to talk about Drake May and stuff like that, but I don't want to go down the wrong wormhole here because we're still talking receivers here. But it is interesting, just to put a little bow on it, I thought when they had pick 39 that they traded to the Panthers, yeah. the best route for the Giants, and this was two months ago, was receiver at six, mm-hmm. preferably neighbors for them because they have, don't have that guy. Right. And then – come up from 39 because you also have 47 back into round one and get the tier two quarterbacks which is the Penix and Knicks kind of range and I thought McCarthy was there at the time too he's not anymore and those days are just gone yeah the quarterback thirst is insane I wonder about Bo Nix maybe that still might be available for that conversation even though I'm starting to feel that 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 at least I don't think it should be and I'm starting to feel that it won't be but we'll we'll see that that seems to be the last name available the big group yes that might be available for that late first round early second round trade up now we get our guy and go from there um but all right let's go let's keep hitting on your receivers so here. number three Roma Dunze this yeah. is the one full transparency I struggled with the most yeah. not even close like the other ones I at least see something 
something where I'm like, definitely. Right. With Roma Dunze, he is so hard to compare to somebody because he's just a different kind of receiver. I think you got it right you here, You like though. this one? This, so I used the the one? this is the one I used. So I blended the, it. The I, first one. Yeah, Keenan yeah. Allen, the timing, the footwork, yes. understanding the, you know, the back shoulder ball. Exactly. Playing the bigger. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. The, the blend that I throw Hushman Zada in there is, I think Rome is physical. He's gotten more physical. I think right. he's somebody that understands how to catch the ball in close quarters sure. and foam boots and congested spaces. Right. So that that was a very very difficult one to nail down. Yeah, I you know, but I like your Keenan Allen one. That was one of the first names that came to my mind when I watched Rome. Uh, even early in the college football season, you know, I went, oh, he's kind of a Keenan Allen, Devonte Adams type ish type of player. It's not going to be, oh wow, watch him fly by this guy. Oh my gosh, this is the most explosive thing in the world. There's plenty of that in that department, but it's not the wowing elite part of his game. It's the other stuff. He's a natural in playing the football game. He's a natural at the position, and then you couple that with the size and the ability to route run uh, run routes. He's he's perfect for an NFL offense. Uh, you know th- that that's the big thing. But that's where I am a little lower on like him and Harrison Jr. Because you know me, I'm into more of the the DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors type yeah. of thing. Run by people, right? Run by people. Or your you. next comp of Christian Watson, Brian Thomas right. Jr. Perfect example. Right? Those are my kind of guys that I I prefer more at the top of the draft rather than again the other guys are really good and I just want to make sure I'm clear about this but yeah it's not about just pure physical prowess with those guys it is a little bit about hey precise route running playing the game doing that and I just value you know that other guy a little more so the next one with Brian Thomas Jr. the yeah. reality in this world is there's not a lot of people that are 6'3 210 right. pounds and right. run 4'3 exactly right there's just not exactly right and I'll, I'll say some of the things they need polish on it's similar with Watson coming out of an FCS mm-hmm. program Mm-hmm. Right. Where, listen, Brian Thomas Jr. does not run an advanced route tree. I don't care because the routes he runs, he's excellent at. Yeah. The hang time, the acrobatic nature, it's simply just that, Chris, once again, these guys, there's not a lot of people that are built like this that move like this. That's, that's why I'm in love with them. Yeah. I am. You know, it, it's a little more raw. You're right. But I, again, the limited route tree, I always go back to like DK AJ Metcalf. Brown and DK Metcalf in those years to go, yeah, there's only three routes, but they run those three routes really damn good. And then I see what they do with the ball in their hand and they're ability to stick the foot in the ground and make sharp cuts that way hmm, let me put that together oh when he has to run that route he'll be able to stick his foot in the ground and do that so we'll see right we'll see I think these are clearly the four best guys in the draft at wide receiver Easily. in fact I think these are the only four first rounders really in my opinion yep. right uh, I think there is a drop off the rest of these guys that we'll talk about here in a second are good no doubt about it but I don't think it's first round talent Brian Thomas Jr. is the guy that I'm going to be interested to see where he goes where that ends up right I think, you know, I've gotten some feedback there, right? I think on some teams he's high, he's higher up there, right? I have been told there is some off the field stuff a little with Brian Thomas Jr., right? I don't know how bad it is. I don't know what the extent it is. I don't dig into that stuff too much. I kind of just go with what my friends I text with, like, yeah, his off the field stuff's not squeaky clean. Whatever. It helps you forecast. Right. So, right. right. It just helps you forecast and think about now with the draft coming, like where this might happen, how it might play out. I clearly value, value him as my number two receiver as far as pure physical talent on the on the football field. I really love him. Um, but, yeah, I think there is a, a big drop off. And with him, you get the feel. My point was is that those other three guys, your top three guys, I, I would expect they're going to be off the board by – 14 at the very least or you know probably before that really the top three won't make it out of 10 i probably not so there you get to that and then you go okay wait wait wait. now we're with one guy left that is clearly going to have a first round grade on everybody's board right where does he go who's going to be aggressive is somebody going to go damn there's only one difference making receiver left we got to make a move like you know people think the buffalo bills might right or somebody like that where does that go i i think to me he is one of the interesting people to to kind of feel or see or talk about where he ends up i have the four of them in my top 11 yeah the next guy isn't until 28 right and that's troy franklin that's troy franklin so that's a big that's it's a, a big, big drop. difference. Now, I'll say this. Yeah. No matter what I think of him, what you think of him, and I have Adonai Mitchell at 42, he's going earlier than people think. He's going in the first round. Who's Ad- that? Adonai Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell from Texas mm, because yeah. of the traits. Because And we can have that conversation when we get to him, the shortcomings as well. But he's going very early. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, it seems that way, right? Um, 
to me, I look at him as more of a top of the second round type of guy. That's right where I have him. Right. That's how I would have. But yeah, would I be shocked to see him go at 28 or something like that? Certainly. But I think you and I talked at the time. I don't know if we talked on air. But yeah, his film is, is, is makes you want more. Too much cruise control. It's too much cruise control. Definitely not enough intensity, you know, urgency running routes. Wait for the talent we're talking about. A guy that it's, there's just not enough after the catch that bothers me. Goes down too easy. Right, there's just some of that, but you no, know, it, it does seem like uh, the NFL likes them. You hear that name, there's just too much smoke, there's got to be fire there. So, five Troy Franklin, another tough one. I went with Will Fuller, I know he didn't time like Will Fuller, yeah. but that slender build the first step is the where they're the same, yeah, yeah. Like Franklin's first step makes it really hard to disrupt his release package, right? right. And then he's gone, yeah. And they both have some shortcomings, they're both really skinny, mm-hmm. they drop some layups that drive you insane, yeah. Like, there are quite like, why aren't you bigger? Yeah, right? right. So th- that's an interesting one to me. Franklin is the classic. If he goes to Buffalo, if he goes to the Chiefs, I think like you're like, wow, he's going to explode. Yeah. If no. He goes to the wrong place. Right. Like Carolina. Right. In the second round. Yeah. You're like, ah, this is not going to be so yeah. great. I like Franklin. He definitely has some things, you know, that I think I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it'll translate totally in the NFL. Right. I, I guess or how good he'll possibly be. Right. Liked his game. You know, but you know, even like what you talked about—the great, the quick feet at the line of scrimmage and all that—the you know, route running is a little underwhelming with him at times. Where I'm always like, "Damn, that's a lot of steps there." Damn, right. there's a lot of pitter patter to come out of that break, yeah. right? That was definitely some of the things I, I looked at a little bit. He's a hard guy to. For, he was a hard guy for me to get a feel for how much I really liked him, right? He was in the running for my top five receiver conversation. I uh, picked Roman Wilson as five for me, um, but but certainly like this guy. This whole group is good, as we've talked about. It's really good, and that brings me to Jalen Polk at six. I mean, Chris Godwin, obviously, the, the – highest range of outcome for Polk yeah but the concentration the ability to go over the middle of the field what what like not shocking with Polk but what tells you about his DNA is I think he's the best run blocking receiver in the draft Mm. I mean they will motion him behind the line of scrimmage and he'll go through the a gap and take on linebackers yeah right right it's like there's a different energy to this kid that will work at the NFL there's just something about him where he is fearless. I, once again, that concentration is unbelievable. Some of the yeah. tipped passes that he yeah. was able to catch, and he tested a little better than I thought, so which right. gave you, me a little comfort. Were, yeah, I hear you there. That that was what I worried about, right? I mean, he his I still worry about that. Just the top end explosion there, right? I could see where you go, the Chris Godwin. You're talking about that physicality part of it yes. there, right? Pound for right. pound strength. Yeah. I think Godwin was a little more physically gifted, definitely, right? But I hear you there, and Polka's. Almost like we talked about with Odunze, he, he can play. He just knows how to play. He's got a great ability to you know, adjust to the football. I, I'm with you there. You're probably a little higher on him than I am. Uh, I do like him a lot, but I don't like him as much as like Rick, like Ricky Pearsall, who you're about to talk Man. to in a second here. Ricky Pearsall, and this is, this is probably a comp that will, you know, some eyes will open, calling him Greg Jennings. But there, when you look at the three cone, you look at the short area quickness and how they can slither through defenders mm-hmm. in that first 10 yards, that's where I see him exactly like Greg Jennings. Like, I'm going to get open on a five-step drop, three-step drop, and throw me the ball. Yeah. like just th- right. I'm, And he right. catches everything. 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 I, I'm One a big fan of adju- He's big awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. He's in my top 40. I think in any other receiver class, he'd be talked about as a first-round pick. Yeah, he's, he's close for sure. I mean, his size, the route running, right? The explosion is real. I mean, it's not, again, of the top guys, but it, it's good enough. You see it against big time competition, right? I, I, I got a feel of like Adam Thielen. He was the name I kept using. Yeah, he reminded for me sure. of the way he ran. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Pearsall. A fan of Pearsall in a big way. And the fact where I feel like, honestly, Connor, in my world, I like him better than Polk and Troy, uh, Troy Franklin. Uh, I really do. I think he's safer. So, so yeah, we'll yeah. see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. He, he, guys like Ricky Pearsall are made for the NFL because it's just like there's he's got enough size and explosion to win on the outside. But like a hey, like a, the Edelmans or the Cooper Cups of the world, he's got enough phys- he's got enough route running and smarts, and then that couple that with the physical explosion, man, I think he's made to be.
be that 90 catch a year type For of guy sure. in the NFL. You could play him inside and outside, right. and you right. don't think twice about it. Right. Lad McConkey, I haven't talked to you about yeah. him. Yeah. What do you think of Lad McConkey? I like Lad. I'm not in love with Lad. I think it went too far. I think so Finally. too. I think he's a little bit of a made up. I mean, a little bit of a made up receiver, made up of a specimen to a degree. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I feel like he's as naturally gifted as some of these other guys here. Uh, I do like him. Don't get me wrong. He's another guy. He's made for the NFL in a lot of ways, but he's like a, a smaller, lesser version of Ricky Pearsall. And I in thought my, the same my, thing. That's why I had him behind opinion. him. Right. People are right. always shocked when they see that I had him behind Pearsall, but I'm like, there's a size difference. Now, Ladd is really athletic. He did play outside as well as inside. Yeah. But you have to project to the NFL, and that's where that size starts to matter. And I think the, I think the frame was different for them too. Definitely, I saw a different body type, not height wise or length wise necessarily. Although McConkey's got very short arms and small hands, but uh, the Pearsall plays the a frame. much bigger game, in right? The, and is made for I the mean, NFL and the bumping and grinding of route running. And, yeah, he gets and the getting, shit knocked out of him, and it's like. He just pops up he's like that. Yeah, whatever. Fearless. It's crazy. Yes, he's fearless. But I, really I do, crazy. I do like Lad McConkey. I do, and I think he's a d- little different version of like true jitterbug, right? Work the middle of the field, be that guy, and then you know every now and then he does have enough speed where he could take the shot down the field. Um, now your number ten guy. That's another guy I was I was up there on. Uh, Keon Coleman. The highs are the sugar high of all sugar high. I am, I'm, I'm interested to see where he goes. I get a feel that I get a feel from the draft community or the NFL community that he is he is viewed as someone that goes somewhere between like 32 and 50, that's somewhere a, in that that's range. That's what I right? would say too. You know, I wasn't sure if he would be viewed that way, and I feel like I'm even being probably a little. Um, uh, wide range with 50 because I feel like I've gotten a lot of feedback of like top of the second round more than not when I when I hear that name or we talk about that name but another guy where it might not be wowing the highlights not be like oh my gosh they're the most amazing things you've ever seen but it's still really damn good and I think it's a style and a physical size that fits the NFL to where I look like it's just I feel like it's day one he'll be ready to go right and that's what you hope for I think he struggles to separate but he doesn't always have to be open no that's what matters the most they really threw him screens and jump balls you watch the offense I mean he only had two games of 100 plus yards right so it's like hey we're throwing you a screen I think he returned punts or he definitely was a returner for them in some capacity which is bizarre for a receiver built like him um, usually, you just don't see those big X receivers returning back there. He, he can stick his foot in the ground and make people miss as good as anybody in the draft. Let alone that with the route running. That's where again, he's another guy I look at almost like what we talked about with Marvin Harrison Jr. A little where I go, this guy to me is a big slot. He is Anquan Bolden Jr. ish in my in the way he moves, in my opinion. You know, and it's it's oddly enough they both come from Florida State, but it's yeah, it's not the blazing straight ahead speed. It's the strength, it's the physicality, and it's the ability to run really intricate, sharp routes at a high level. I, I really like Keon Coleman. Was on Michigan State's basketball team. That's insane. I, I mean, is that not insane? Yeah, right. Insane. Like Michigan State's right. basketball right. team. Right, and now he's you. made well, the full you see switch some of that football. when he jumps up and gets those balls. I mean, he's he's it's, dunking on people. It's some of the best plays in Definitely. this wide receiver class. Definitely. I guess we'll put a bow on this with with uh, Adonai Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, just for me, the highs are once again. I mean, he can make great plays in the air. He's somebody that you love the movement, the explosiveness at times, the intensity, and overall aggression drove me completely yeah, it's insane. Crazy, like complete. I I watched him more than any receiver in this draft right. because. Every time I ranked him, it was the most feedback where people were like, and this is everyone, agents, scouts, fans, like, he's going earlier than you think, he's a number one receiver, all these things. I just, this is such a weird nitpicky thing. I cannot stomach a guy that big how many times he lets a corner or a safety run by him in the run game. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he missed the block. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, like, ran by him where right. I'm like, dude, the intensity of the NFL, it's going to be <laughs> tough, man. Like, it's... It's it's not just about catching a fade route in the back of the end zone. No. And I know it's such a nitpicky thing and it'll drive people crazy when I say that, but it's just a DNA thing where you you can't cruise through thirty five percent of the game. That's where I I I where I'll push back with you is I don't think he'll go in the first round. I think when push comes to shove, he ends up going to the second because round of what, because of the things you're th- talking about. Right. Everyone's gonna go, I like everything about it, but I'm not sure I wanna go first round in with this guy. So we'll see. But, yeah, he's definitely one of those guys. And you, like me, are a little lower on the Texas guys than most, most yeah, out I've there. Yeah, I have Worthy at 11. Right? Because, yeah, uh, Worthy to me is I, I wouldn't touch Worthy in the first round. It's the play strength. But, again, yeah, yeah. well, it, you know, he's tough. I will give him that. Right. Right? 
I, you know, he is fast as hell, right? I don't think he is off the line of scrimmage. If you just watched that and didn't know his 40 time, I don't think you would watch the game and go, oh, yeah, this guy looks like he's a 1-4-9-10 and runs 4-2-2, right? He doesn't play that fast, in my opinion. Now, he opens up, and you see him go, and you go, well, he's really fast. Don't get me wrong, right? But I didn't feel like I was turning this on and just going, oh, my gosh, right? I felt like I was doing more of that with Jamar Chase a few years ago, going, holy crap. Me too. He just exploded by this guy at the line of scrimmage. He's gone. It's see you later, right? And there's not as much of that in the Xavier Worthy game as I guess I was expecting let alone like a a Donnie Mitchell there's too many plays where I go where explode off the ball where's the urgency why is this happening in that offense why are we smooth like oh we're gonna build up speed all the time there's a little too much of that so he's another one I'm interested I think a lot of people I see him again Chiefs at 32 and the end of the first round I'm gonna say he's another one that ends up not going in the first round and ends up somewhere early in the second uh I just feel like that between some of the things we're talking about and we see, and then I think the way some of these linemen are valued in this draft and that there's a big drop-off once you get out of the main core grooves there, that people are going to go, ah, we can still get a good receiver in the second. We can, there's only one more D tackle left on the board. There's only one more good pass rusher. There's only one more good guard, and it falls off a cliff. And I feel like that's what's going to end up happening to push these guys out of the first round maybe. I'm with you. I think yeah. about 33 to, we'll say, 51 because that starts with the Panthers and ends with the Steelers. Yeah. The amount of receivers in that range mm. that come off the board. Mm. It might be like eight receivers. I wouldn't taken be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. I so hear that. I think I agree with you, Chris. Yeah. I think teams will look at it that way as well. Uh, if you want to see my I ranked 30 receivers in this draft. It's all on NBCSports.com. Came up with player comps for about 18 of them. Yeah, 17 cool. of them. NBCSports.com so, yep. slash Connor Rogers. That's right. Connor Dash Rogers. That's right. Right. Let's get into uh, some questions here, Chris. I the, like this first one here. The good people here have tons of questions for you. This is from Justin Hardwick. Who's a better receiver trio coming into the draft? Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, and Devontae Smith, or Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze? I know you value Thomas Jr. higher, but I'm take I'm talking consensus. Okay, that's good. That's good. Way to go, Justin. Right. Uh, I'm definitely going to take the first group. I, I am uh, right now. First off, that's a pretty special group. Okay. I mean, Jamar Chase was. The number one receiver the year before he came out in the draft, right? I mean, this Jamar Chase came into the NFL and was almost within halfway of his rookie year, we were going, is he one of the best receivers in football, right? Devontae Smith won the freaking Heisman. <laughs> like, Devontae Smith is freaky, right? And then Jalen Waddle, of course, has got his own freakiness about him, too. So, yeah, I, you know, again, I love neighbors. And I like Odunze and Marvin Harrison Jr., but I certainly have more questions about Odunze and Marvin Harrison Jr. than I did about Chase, Jalen Waddle, or Devontae Smith coming out. And again, that's me. That's kind of how I look at it. But what say you there, Johnny Gunshot? This one's tricky. I was looking for my 2020 big yeah, board. Right. Um, okay, I think I actually went back and found it. Now, I know this. I like Chase better than... Marv. Right. And they're the top receivers from gotcha. each year. Where right. I get a little mixed up is, yeah. and I really liked Waddle. Yeah. Waddle was my wide receiver too that year. Okay. And Devontae's a great player. Yeah. I just thought physically I went with Chase and Waddle over him. Right. This this is really tricky. I think I'd, I'd align with you yeah. because you have the top guy in the group and then it's almost a tie across the board. Yeah. So yeah, this one, now having the fourth guy is nice. Like Brian Thomas, you, when you take it into a fourth guy, you're like, damn, this one's really, really good. Yeah. I, as much as I love Marv, he's my top player in the draft, I thought Chase was... Chase was special. Chase is the best I've seen. Yeah. And it's close, yeah. but Chase is the best I've yeah. seen. Chase was really special. I he, think people didn't realize how strong he was right. at the catch point. Right. They're like, oh, he's fast. And it's like, mm, mm, this is the whole thing. a lot thing. of people out. This he is jumps the, up and, and mosses people, does it all. And it was against guys that were going to be drafted in Definitely. the first two rounds. Right. So, AJ Terrell's of Clemson, man-to-man down the field or whatever else. Yes, right. right. It yeah. was top-notch players you got to see it against. It's really, really tricky. Yeah. So, okay. I think I actually found so, the 2021 big board. I had Chase yeah, sixth. And right. this was, I liked this draft. It didn't work out the way we thought. Right. But Chase sixth. I had Waddle seventh. Gotcha. And Smith tenth. Okay. All right. All in the top ten. Yeah. I think I was Chase one. I had Smith two. And I believe Waddle yeah. three, if I can remember. Yeah. I definitely had Smith and Chase as my top two guys. Chase yeah. being the top one. Chase, right? Waddle, Chase and Waddle one and two had the receivers. Smith was three. And then uh, you had to go down. 
I liked Bateman that year. That hasn't oh, worked I out. I had Deami Brown, then Waddle, right. So okay. I was wrong there for sure, right? For sure. But it's a great group. Uh, it was a really good group. Really? And, I mean, hey, listen, we got breaking news right now. Devontae Smith, speaking of it, right? Three years, $75 million, right? So that shows you with the Eagles. Right. The Eagles now good timing. are paying Devontae Smith more than the guy who is, to me, one of the five best receivers in football, and A.J. Brown, and is in a special class of guys. That's crazy. Devontae Smith, I, I, I kind of, I've had these, Devontae Smith, I think, is a little better than people realize even right now. I do. I think he's an extremely good route runner. But Devontae Smith, again, is one of those guys we talk about, hey, he can run by people down the field, and you could throw the ball, and he can either beat them with his speed or he can jump up and catch it. He is phenomenal that way. But getting big-time number one money here, I mean, really with actual value of this contract, Devontae Smith's going to be the highest paid receiver in football. Wow. Here, because we had a long conversation about this today with Florio Connor. Like, Tyreek Hill's $30 million a year average, it's, it's not, it's like 24 and change, right. really. It's, it's the, the 45th of it. last, the $45 million last year of the contract that makes it that. Devontae Smith is like 23 and change, right? So none of them are what they appear that they actually are. This right here is flat out three years, $75 million. Right, so this after is, the fifth year option, after the which is year, almost just, sixteen. That's mil. what I mean. We're getting, we're getting, uh, yeah. So basically, a hundred million dollar receiver. Ba basically that, and you're right. He's got the fifth year option, so they're clowning that into this, right? The so it's basically going to be a four year now ninety one, ninety two million dollar type of deal, right? That's kind of how they're valuing it, I guess, is is exactly how it's going because I don't think they're tearing up the fifth year option. They will not. No. So he will come out of that with about, I believe, sixty seven ish guaranteed. Wow. It's yeah. a great deal Take for him. It. Take right. the money. Yeah. Yeah. Great guarantees. Yeah. It's almost twenty three a year. And we still don't have a Justin Jefferson deal. We don't have a T. Higgins deal. They're going to get Chase done. We know that eventually. Right. I it's, mean, it's, it's, I mean here's the, Jefferson and Chase are going to wait to the last second because both of those guys know they have their team, right? <laughs> they know they're going to get paid. It's just about how much and which one of those two is going to be the top paid guy. And there is a legitimate competition between those two. So that is a real thing. One's going to want, want to get – I signed a $30 million a year contract, and the next guy is going to go, I'll take $30 million and $1 just to say I'm the highest paid. I mean, they're, they're literally like that. But, yeah, everybody's waiting for that. Now, these other guys, I'm going to be interested to see where this goes. C.D. Lamb is fascinating. C.D. Lamb, Ayuk, and T. Higgins, to me, are all in the same book, right? I said this a little last week to, to Florio, right? Because... I don't know exactly what they're asking for, but I got to think like Brandon Ayuk's going, wait, Debo's making $22 million a year. I had a better year. I'm, I want more than $22 million, right? I got to think that. T. Higgins, I would think, is somewhere along those lands. CeeDee Lamb's looking at his year going, wait, I want to be paid like the top guy in the market, right? All of that. My, my, I'm not as high on those guys as maybe the rest of the world is. I like CeeDee Lamb. Don't right. get me wrong. But again, I don't think he's in the class of Jamar Chase, What's Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson, or A.J. Brown. I feel like those guys, you don't, you don't need to organize any place for them. You just go, if he's man-to-man -man outside, throw, him the, win, ball. throw yeah. him the ball, right? C.D. Lamb, you can do that some of the time, but I think he needs a little system help a little bit. He's not just going to catch a slant and run 70 like the other guys we just mentioned are, or just run by somebody for a 70-yard bomb. Right, still really good. I'm certainly not trying to take it away from them, but that to me is going to be the interesting thing here. And where I, I keep bringing this up, and Pete and Matt Casey have heard me talk about this behind the scenes, and I talked about this with Florio today. Like, if I'm these teams, I'm calling these guys bluffs. I'm calling their bluff. Like, hey, you're really good. We like you. We'd like you to pay you this. It's not the top of. It's not the number one receiver money. Like, I mean, top of the market, but it's really close to the top guys or right up there with the top guys, right? Right, I would. You got to draw a line to me, and to me, where I would the thing I've been saying all week, right? If I'm the 49ers or the Cowboys, I, I would I would call their buffs and go, agent, call around teams, tell me who's gonna get give us a trade package then. Right. If he's so much what you're talking about, right? Because the last guy that was in this scenario, AJ Brown, he was in this scenario. They went, here's a 17th pick, and we know we have to pay him because he's AJ Brown. We'll do that. That's how good he is, right? So these guys want that type of money. Well, show me that type of deal. 
Show me that the league values them like A.J. Brown or some of these other guys are valued. See, and I think they're putting their value a little higher than where the league actually values them, and that's where I think you're going to see them drag their feet on this a little bit, these teams, until it, they get it figured out. That's the issue of why first-round picks don't often get traded anymore because of you have to also factor in the contract. And this is a totally different position, but look at the Brian Burns trade. Brian Burns got traded for a second-round pick Yeah, because the Giants had to pay him. Right, You can't trade a first-rounder and have to take on the salary cap hit. You can do it. Or you better be special. Or you be- Right. AJ Brown's a great callback to it. Uh, obviously, the Bills did it a couple years ago with Diggs. Right. Minnesota better then be, drafted, you drafted be Justin special. Jefferson. Right. But you got to be yeah. that guy. You got to be like, okay, we're sold. We're willing to pay him. We know it. He's it. Bam. Right. Do it. Right? And I don't think there's that type of market for IU T. Higgins uh, or C.D. Lamb. Right. And that, that's to me where, where it'll be interesting. And, you know, Florio brought this up today, which I thought was a great point. T. Higgins got franchised. He's in year five. He's in year five. The other guys have to do the fifth year option because they were in the first round pick. It actually screws you it over does. to be drafted in the first round because of the fifth year option thing, where, you know, that doesn't sound right when you say that out loud. That doesn't sound right. Right. Hey, you're better. The league valued is, viewed you as better. Um, and now we're going to make you wait longer to actually get you know money, big money, and be a, a, more of a free enterprise, right? That that doesn't make sense. They need to fix that. That's seriously messed <laughs> the up. The NFL collective bargaining agreement is unbelievable when you look at it. Sometimes, yeah. The well, the owners always win. They always they win. always win with the franchise That's tags, right. the fifth year option, right? Basically, the security teams get. This is good timing from Elliot oh, Wilkinson. Good. Per- perfect. Do you think the 49ers should pay Ayuk or let him go? I think they should let him go just because of the price. Plus, with the amount of good receivers coming out of the draft now, I would only pay top-end money to guys like Hill, Chase, and Jefferson. It's kind of what you just said. I, 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 the, I feel the league – I've had enough conversations with people. I feel like the league is changing a little bit. I do. I think it's finally, like I, I've said a little bit, like teams are stopping negotiating against themselves. Right. Where they're like, oh, because we drafted him and, you know, we liked him and he's our guy. Like, we're going to pay him – you know, top tier money, even though he's not a top tier player. I think that's gone on a little too much, right? Where it's like, hey, here's $20 million. No, no, here's 21. I didn't even ask for 21. No, we want to give it to you. Like, there's some of that going on in the league right now where you're like, well, who who was going to pay them that? Why are you the doing Taysom that? Hill contract. Right. Why are you doing <laughs> that? Like, you know, I argue this with like Blake Bortles and the Jaguars when they gave him an extension. I was like, why did you give him that much money? Who did, who else was going to? Show me. It'd be the same thing I would say with like Tua and his contract and some of these. Don't overpay him. Who is going to go out and steal Daniel Jones with the Giants? Who are we worried about that someone was going to pay him $45 million a year? Nobody? Right. Nobody. Why did we do that? We, we, if we couldn't have, if we would have, the Giants, if we would have offered Daniel Jones $34 million a year, was he going to say no? I bet you not. Like, again, Who's, so that's what I'm saying with this, and I agree with Elliot Wilkinson a little bit. Like, the league's got to stop doing this, even at the quarterback position. Are you Patrick Mahomes? No, you're not. Then you make less than that. That's just the way it is. Sorry. The money will go to other guys in the roster. But I, I, I think I kind of tend to believe with the 49ers, Connor, Debo's being paid like a top receiver. Kittle's being paid like a top tight end. McCaffrey. McCaffrey's paying the top running back. George Kittle's being paid like the top tight end, right? They're paying Javon Hargrave the top like top five D tackle money. You're paying Nick Bosa the highest paid defensive player in football. Fred Warner is a top three linebacker contract, right? They better watch out or they're going to be in Ramsville here, where Trent, their team. Williams has to. Trent make Williams a lot is up money. there. Yeah, did I not say him? I'm no, sorry. Yeah, but top tier of the market, right? So. You look at that. I go. They're they're worried. I'm worried about them being in Ramsville of having this extremely top heavy football team with no depth and all of that. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. If I'm Shanahan of the 49ers, somebody offers me for a first round pick for Ayuk, I'm I'm probably gonna take it. I am because again, that's just man, that's a lot of big money players. Uh, Traverius Ward. Traverius Ward is up there. 18.4 million. There you cap go. Hit. Right. Yeah. So that's that's what that's where. This is going to be interesting with the Ayuk thing because I can certainly see his side of going, wait, I want to be paid like this. Debo's making this. I'm better than Debo right now. I showed you guys that. And what I said to Florio today because we had a little of this conversation is Debo has got to scare the Niners a little bit. Debo got exposed a little towards the end of the year with teams that know how to play man-to-man. Debo can't separate like Ayuk can. 
but Debo yet can do the speed sweeps, the reverses, the screens, and be so special there. You know, so they got to figure this out a little bit. But this has a potential to be a real problem for them. Do you think it's a situation where they try to get through this year with IU? I feel as like is, that's what they're trying, and then to do. move on from yeah. Debo. M- maybe Debo's guaranteed right. money ends, ends after this year. Right. right. So then it's like, okay, now we move all that money to IU. I, I I feel like. Something like that, or at least at the very least, I feel like holding it all together just for one more run here at right. the Super Bowl, right? But what you're saying to me makes a lot of sense. I think Ayuk is a better all-around wide receiver than Debo Samuel. I love Debo, don't get me wrong. Love his attitude, his physicality, and all that. But like we saw, right, I mean, in the Super Bowl, he, he can't separate from guys like Legereus Sneed and Trent McDuffie. They were all over him like white on rice, right? And that, that would bother me, especially as he gets older and more beat up and not quite yeah. as fast and strong and explosive. So, yeah, uh, these three wide receivers are going to be, be very interesting. But I think that's what the Bengals are doing too. They're just trying to kick the can down the road one more – Hey, the Super Bowl window's open. Let's keep this damn good receiver here with us so we can, you know, still be one of the top teams in football. And it feels like Debo, after this year, he'll turn 29 in January. It's it's a different 29 with the hits it's he's taken. It's a beat up physical, it's, right. It's right. a running back-ish slash receiver type body. That's what you have to keep in mind. Right. It's not all 29s are the same at no, receiver. definitely not. I'm, all right. I'm with you there. Let's jump back to the draft. Yeah. This question from DaxS19. Oh. What's the ceiling on Quinion Mitchell? And will he be there for the Ravens at 30? No. He won't. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I, I I I think Quinion Mitchell is arguably the best defensive player in the draft. I that's where I would put I mean, he's up there with the best guys in the draft. He I'm not so sure he's not my best guy in the draft. I mean I have a man crush on Quinion Mitchell. He's awesome. I do. I, I see special with Quinion Mitchell. I really do. Like I see a guy that's in rarefied air in, in my, like, where I go, ooh, this guy has a chance to be, like, a real island superstar type corner in the NFL, right? The rare ones that come about every now and then. But that size with that explosiveness, right, the acceleration, the way he plays the ball, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Mitchell. It's funny that the question was about the Ravens. My player comparison for Quinion Mitchell was Jimmy Smith. Right. Right, that size. Yeah, Jimmy Smith was a better athlete than people remember. I know, I know he was. Yeah. I still don't think he was as physically gifted as this guy. Right. I mean, Quinion's in a pretty unique Quinion tier. Quinion is in yeah. a unique tier. Exactly yeah. right. I'm a big Jimmy Smith fan. Like big, bo- like big body, big body, strong. Yes. Not afraid to hit and lower the shoulder not and do all. all that. Right. Right. I mean, he's got Devin Witherspoon ish type traits when it's when it comes to that. Right. And he's bigger. Except he's bigger, and I think a better pure cover man, cover a corner outside against elite type of receivers. See, like when I look at Quinion, he's a rarefied guy where I go, you know, hey, I know that's Jamar Chase out there, but I feel okay with Quinion. I think he's the type of athlete that we're willing to, hey, 20 times, 25 times a game, we'll put you man-to-man. We'll see where it goes, right? I, I think he's that type of guy. I, I'm interested to hear. You think it, you think there's a chance he is the top guy off the board? Yeah, I know yeah. the odds were about plus 350. It's more Dallas thought, Turner, right? Yeah, Dallas Turner. Um, and him are clearly the guys that everybody seems to have as one or two versus off the board. a sneaky one. Right. Jared Verse could be the first yeah. one if someone really need a pass rush I think the th- reason I like Quinion is if the Chargers move out of five to that 11 to 13 spot I think the Chargers would take Ooh, Quinion wow that feels like a hardball we need corner help we want someone physical we want to change the identity of the team that's where I would kind of I wouldn't be shocked right. I mean yeah. they, they definitely could use that Right. And who's taking defense one through ten Atlanta's the only one at eight and Atlanta's taking calls right now like Crazy. It seems like that's the only defensive pick on the board right now yeah. is Atlanta, right? And, you know, I, I I do. I look at Quinya Mitchell, and I think he, for me, is one of the ten best players in the draft. Like I said, I think I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't think he's the best defensive player in the draft. I do just sit there and wonder where he goes. Your Chargers thoughts interesting, you know, especially. Hey, that that defense, what they're going to do there, bringing over the Michigan DC, right? Playing there, they're a little bit of a believer in getting on an island, playing some man to man, doing some creative stuff that way, right? I, the other team, I think I would have pinned with it or thought about for a little while, like the Vikings. Brian Flores, I know he likes to play man to man and do that. That's his history in Miami and even right. New England before that. But are they going to be even in the market for that, or is it just all quarterback, 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 quarterback? So uh, that's what I keep coming back to, Quinn. Mitchell is just where does he land in the top 15 
right? And what, how does that happen? I, that's where I'm going to be interested to see. It feels like the Colts with Chris Ballard wouldn't a lot let him of people get out say of 15. That. Right. But right. I, just don't think, I just don't think he's there, personally. I, I, I wouldn't think he's there either, and I wonder if that's the Colts. The Colts, you know, they, they play Seattle three. Do they value man-to-man shutdown cover corners? I don't know if they do. That that's where I'm I'm intrigued. So you're point. right. I keep going. There's no way he'll get out of the top 15. But I keep sitting here going. <laughs> okay, going? but who's going to take him? Who is it? And because it, it does, I think a lot of our common logic with a lot of these top picks, I go back to an offensive guy more times than not. All right, this one from King Crow Snow One. Do you think JJ McCarthy will get drafted ahead of Drake May? It seems like it's building towards this. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's JJ McCarthy's mystery. stock is as high as I ever could have imagined it would be. I never thought we'd be talking about J.J. McCarthy in the top five or top six of the draft. In fact, when I was doing my rankings, I was like, he's a top 20 pick. I thought I was being pretty bold by saying that. I was like, damn, I, I mean, hey, he's a first runner. He's in top 20. I was <laughs> like, going top I'm five. like, I was expecting people to be like, are you kidding me? You think he's like, and, like, and now he's going to be the number third pick in the draft. I'm right. like, what? You know, I don't know if I think he's that good. <laughs> yeah, it's right? funny how it works. But he's, he is, he, he is really good. And as I tried to state on my, you know, quarterback ranking show, three, four, and five were nitpicky. I like them all. It's a rare year where I went, wait, all these guys can play quarterback in the NFL. But the Drake May conversation is the conversation right now. It is. What happens there? Where is he going to go? Right. You know, it, like we always talk about it. it only takes one or two teams to, to, to love you and you, you can be a top 10 pick. Right. I know there's teams in football that are like, whoa, I would never take him in the top 10, right? I have had those people reach out to me, right? But again, like we talked about earlier, there's obviously some teams that like him. Where there's smoke, there's fire. It's, I've learned that enough. Uh, now, you know, those teams haven't reached out to me because they probably realize I'm pretty low on them and I don't hear anything from them. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky one with Drake, man. I know a lot of people wanted to hear from us, our differences. Yeah, they want us to fight. It was, it was it funny out. listening to that podcast yeah. from you because I didn't even disagree with things you said. It's just a lot more projection. It is. Like, it's, I yes. wrote down, his field vision, decision-making, and inconsistent throwing sets a scary floor. Yes. I am aware of this. Yeah. When people ask me, who's the bust potential in the top right. ten, it's my number two quarterback, Drake May. Yeah. But I think, number one, the body type. Sure. It's, it's a quarterback body type. I hear you. It's also the fact, I think he throws the middle of the field better than a lot of guys in this draft. Gotcha. Which okay. it would matter to like a Minnesota. Remember we had the conversation sure. when they didn't go after Russell Wilson. Right, right. I think that matters a lot. He's got the gunslinger in him. Some of the throws are unbelievable. They are. But they like you said, are. the consistency issue, it takes projecting him. I don't think he should start as a rookie. No. And I don't think when you're a top three pick anymore, you're afforded that luxury. Yeah, I, I agreed. Which that, is a McCarthy problem. Right. I don't think McCarthy should start. Right. As no, a I, I, but I would feel more comfortable starting McCarthy just because he's played an NFL style of football yeah. already, right? I mean, he was playing the most unfriendly quarterback school ever, right? I mean, it's it literally like, hey, we're not going to throw for a half hour, and then we want you to make some big throws against Alabama late in the game. Like, I, yeah. I mean, it's third, hard. It's always third and seven. It is. It's hard. <laughs> It's yeah. hard the way he played. It is. Um, but listen, I, I hear what you say about May. I, I hear you there. And, you know, I to me, there's just a few too many things that I don't like to trust it, right? As a I, – I understand the projection. I guess I, I just don't understand early on in the first round, anything like that, you know. I, I, I see – the great throws and the things you're talking about. He is a good athlete, right? I've talked about, hey, the, he's got the slowest release that I think of any of these quarterbacks. It's an elongated motion. There can be segmented at times. He points his front toe. There's things that worry me about his mechanical thing, just to button it all up without getting yeah. too in the weeds here, that I just go, I'm not sure that's going to be easily fixed, right? And then the thing I come back to, and again, I know I've been wrong before. I'm certainly not trying to sit here and stand on a high horse with you or anybody no, you're else. No, not at all. This is good. He, he, I've, you know, to the negatives you pointed at, right? I've never seen a really good quarterback miss some of those throws. That is where it right. scares me. Or even at the at his pro day workout, some of those throws, I just went, whoa, I've never seen a really good quarterback do that right there, right? And maybe I'm wrong. And maybe he's part of his transition of fixing his mechanics or whatever else. We'll see where it goes. But he's scary to me. That That's all I'm saying. And I know everybody keeps throwing out Herbert and Josh Allen and all that. And all That's I would just say is much. they did not lose control of the ball like Drake May did, right? That, that would be my big thing. Not that they were perfect, right? I always say Josh Allen made some throws where you went, why are you throwing that 
there's four people. Why do you think you can fit it underneath that guy's armpit and between that guy's legs and still get it in there, right? And you go, that's head scratching. But I never went, oh, he lost control of the football like Drake May. And that's where it's going to be uh, going to be interesting. And I think, hey, listen, obviously there's teams that see what you see and want, or, and then going, wait, I, I think I can tweak this, and then we can have something here, right? Um, but I'm with you in the fact that it's it's got to be it should definitely be sit a year or sit two years. And when I hear that too, I just go, that's not the third pick of the draft, but you know, still people might take them there for for strictly the potential in the future. How do you, Chris, handle with? Bad habits that are developed by yeah. being on a bad offense. I, I hear you there. Because that's part of it. Like, the line stunk. I get you. Until Devontae Walker was ruled eligible for the season, he's not throwing to much right. anymore. Right. It's just a bad offense. And part of it, he overcompensates at times. Like, the back foot throwing into three defenders is just like, the back you, can't, foot throwing, you can't do that. The moving in the pocket right. sometimes when he shouldn't, right? You know, his movement in the pocket, I thought, is the worst out of the group there. But, no, I, so... Like, I understand some of that. And I always try to think of like, oh, man, hey, he's been hit a lot in this game or had bad pressure all game. So it's hard. I have a a soft spot and understand that, too. It's still just as I feel with like a like I hear sometimes with Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, he didn't have C.J. Stroud. It didn't look the same. It doesn't matter. I still saw guys covering man to man and didn't like the way he separated all the time. And like with Drake Mad say, I still saw pockets, plenty of pockets that were clean and the guy was open and the ball didn't hit the target. Right. Right. And that bothers me. You know, I take in the other stuff and go, hey, I know there's probably a few throws he missed here and there just because he got hit a lot. He couldn't even stand in the pocket, do that. I get that. But I, I don't think it changes my still my base thought uh, about what I saw and what I evaluated from him. I think that covered a lot of our next questions. Yeah. Mark Floyd said, not a question, but I want to hear you both talk Drake May. Sounds like you both have different opinions, and the draft public is all over the place. Hashtag love the pod. NFL fan Matt, can you guys debate May for us? Would love to hear both sides of the spectrum on him. I'm at Chris Fourth Down style. <laughs> uh, when Chris- that goes back to our Lions going for it on Fourth Down. Me and Ahmed had it, had it out. Right, he was he was coming in. He was going to defend the Lions in the NFC Championship game instead of going up by 17 points halfway <laughs> through the third quarter, where Dan Campbell would have signed the line before the season starts that says you could be up 17 on the road in San Francisco. He's defending his guy. He dies this on the Dan Campbell we do. hill. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. go for it. He brings out all oh, the kicker hasn't hit a field goal between 46 and 48 <laughs> yards in 74 years. Right, brings all this shit out to me. So that's where it's back from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Chris, when you talked to the PFF guys last week on their pod, Sam Monson said May reminds him of the Brad Pitt money ball scene. If he's a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? That's what he said to That's me. That's interesting. That was a good line that he brought out. That is a good out. line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we had some good conversations with the, the PFF guys last week, right? We, we don't always see things eye to eye like you and me, uh, but had some good talks. And, yeah, I, I honestly thought – I was going to get like a lot of pushback from them about Drake Mann. I was like, oh, here we go. Right, like, right, I'm right. about to have it out with the PFF guys, yeah. <laughs> right, on Drake Mann. Just what the internet wants. And then I was like, oh, shit, I, okay. I, mean, I didn't realize Sam kind of believes in some of my same thoughts and sees it the same way. So, uh, yeah, that was actually a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Let's get into more quarterbacks of the draft. Swish yeah. B said, Chris, what do you think of Joe Milton? Mm. He's got all the tools, but he's still pretty raw. Do you think he has a chance to be a starter one day? I, you know, I do think he has a chance. Now, there's some work to be done here. I like Joe Milton from this standpoint, right? If I was a team that had like, hey, I got a starter, I got a backup that I feel pretty good, right? But hey, my backup might only be here for another year or two, and then I got to start, right? Joe Milton would be the guy that I would want for that situation. Just sit in the room with sit them? Sit in the room for a little bit. I think he can be our backup a year or two from now, and then mm, he has some elite traits about him to where maybe we strike gold and he could be a starting quarterback in the NFL at some point. It's raw. It can be all over the place from every sense of the imagination. But, like, there's still a lot of eye-popping throws. And there's still a lot of, like, whoa, he's standing in the pocket. He's seeing the field well. Whoa, that's a strike. And, of course, he can move a little too, right? So, yeah. But is there plays where he drops back and you don't know exactly what he's looking at or where the ball's going to go? Yeah, definitely is, right? There's definitely some of that. You know, not that it's Anthony Richardson, right? But those are things that worried me on the film last year with Anthony Richardson. And I knew I was going to be wrong about Anthony Richardson, like, 
you know, three weeks before the draft because I had all my friends t- like tell me, like, dude, Anthony Richardson's amazing in meetings. He knows football, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, okay, so he knows how to – he can play. He's going to be able to do this, right? I don't know any of that about Joe Milton yet. I don't know. Right. But I do know that there is some, some you know – jaw-dropping skills that he can bring to the table that, yeah, he's the guy I would take a chance on later in the draft to go, ooh, maybe we can hit something there. C4 Bain says, have you watched any of the lower-rated quarterbacks like Spencer Rattler, Jordan Travis, and others? If so, what are your thoughts? I like Spencer Rattler. Oh, Spencer, I think a lot of people do. I think he would be my next guy probably after the main six, right? That's I how think, it is for me. Yeah, I think he would be it, right? I mean, again, that arm is pretty good, moves in the pocket, played a lot of football, right? I don't question whether he can't ma- you know, he can make every throw. I kind of look at Spencer Rattler as a guy where I go – he could be a starter one day, but at the very least, he's going to be a really damn good backup for a long, long time. I, I don't doubt that at all. So, yeah, I liked him. And then Jordan Travis would be the other one that I think is right along those lines as well. You're not going to wow you, but knows how to play, sees the field well, controls the football really well, can be very accurate with it that way, good leader, right? I, I, I think, you know, again, pretty good athlete. You're not going to go, oh, my gosh, he's going to take over a game running, but he certainly can scramble and get first downs that way. I, again, I don't know if I see Jordan Travis as ever being a starting quarterback, but, you know, I think he's like just a – tick down from where Spencer Rattler would be who I think is has a chance maybe to be a starting quarterback Jordan Davis I Travis excuse me I look at and go career could be really awesome backup for your football team just physically limited exactly. to an extent exactly yeah, that r- coupled with the size being right slight and all that exactly right. Right. Rattler's just a he's a very natural thrower he is that's the thing when you watch him you're Definitely. like oh man all the arm is there even though he's not that big yeah I watch him at the senior bowl and he just looks smaller than the other quarterbacks definitely. but the throwing does not no it definitely disappoint is. you out of the all. out of the 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 other group of guys out of the main six, his throwing is definitely the best, the most consistent, and out of all that second class of quarterbacks, he can make the most, let's say, wow throws other than Joe Milton out of the group on a, on a consistent basis. And I think with Rattler, I mean, this is a couple of things I'd written down. He was pressured on 38% of his Ooh. dropbacks this year. He didn't Holy stand a crap. chance. No. He didn't not stand a chance back right. there. So I think that'll be something teams factor in. He transfers from Oklahoma to South Carolina. I think he becomes a smarter player, but I also think he wasn't able to put up the Oklahoma stats no, anymore. No, definitely not. Because not the, the SEC drop. and that team and right. everything there. Right, right. Exactly. right. I mean, Oklahoma, killed. you're the king of the Big 12. In South Carolina, yes. you're, you're not the king of the, uh, the SEC, that's for sure. All right, Halal's real football talk. Who are some of the toughest players to evaluate or project how their game would translate to Ooh, the next level? That's a good one. Mm. Um. You know, we talked about one right off the bat and Jonas, Jonah Ellis, right? right? Where it's like, I know he's going to be good, but how good, right? Like, how, how good will that be? Gosh, there's a lot of good ones. Just, you know, I'm, I'm looking at edge guys right now, too. I think Chop Robinson would be one of those guys. Without a okay, doubt. Okay, right? I'd throw all traits. Right? It's all traits. Not much production. It's not much production. It doesn't feel like it's very instinctive and like a true all-around good football player. But when you say go, go, rockets up my ass oh, and insane. him flying around the corner, yeah, it's as good as it gets. But I don't know. Again, some of his sacks and some of the plays I see him make, I go, that's not going to happen in the NFL. He's not just going to get to go run at the quarterback unblocked or untouched because the right tackle wasn't paying attention to the ball being snapped or whatever else. He would be one. Um, or, there's two, I think, right there. Uh, go ahead. You got any you know who throw in shocked there? me? Yeah, him. Until I, I wrote him up, and right. I never thought I'd feel this way. And he's still a first-rounder yeah. to me. Dallas Turner. Okay. I, hear I did not think Dallas Turner. The film's not wowing. I didn't think Dallas Turner was the typical. Like, you look at the, the testing, the traits, even the production. Yeah. Because he's got good production in the SEC. Yeah. It's I, I compared him to Adafi Owe, okay. actually. Okay. There's just the things I need, like pass rush plan needs to diversify. Yeah. He's in a speed rusher's body, and he wants to win with speed to power. Yeah, and that's all he does, really. It's fun in, right. against certain college teams. Yeah. It probably won't go as well until No, no, you, he's going right. to have to have more there for sure. You're the right. hands at times stop through the rush. Definitely. Like you got to sink the lower half with the upper half. Uh, he gets engulfed in the run game. And it's not just, it's not just tackles. There's tight ends that are big that they just know how to leverage against him. Where I, I just thought the intensity in the run game didn't match the pass rush juice. Mm. Where I'm not saying Dallas Turner isn't a great prospect. Yeah. He's a very good one. He is not a elite pass rushing. I know I'm getting ten sacks. Like I think there's a learning curve there that's going to surprise. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that that's that's exactly right. I, I honestly though I think that's what some teams are like though. 
They right. go, he they, does nothing, and he's still really good in the SEC. <laughs> that's fair. He does one move, right? So I think they're playing a little bit of the, ooh, we think it can expand him. You know, it, it's along the lines of kind of what you said about it's a little bit more of a potential projection pick, right? It, it is a little bit of that. You're gonna If you watch Latu film and you watch Dallas Turner film, in my opinion, you're going to go, well, Latu's the better player. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to the better pass rusher in the NFL. And that's where Turner, I'm with you, is interesting interesting that way right I mean I I think you know again the bend some of the physical traits the arm length all that and you know I saw enough in the run game right against tackles and things where I went I'm I'm not worried he's not perfect there but he's going to be able to do it and be good at it yep he's got tremendous strength in his upper body which is why he goes speed to power all the time (laughs) but yeah he's got to learn some some variety in his moves nor here was another thing that I thought hurt him very few plays in a game where he got to just line up wide and just get after it. Then Alabama, when they say line up wide, it's like he just gets on the outside shoulder of the tackle, and more times than not, he still has to kind of like read the play a little bit, right? Yes. And that hurts, I think, his overall look. But but I'm, I'm with you there about how great it can be. Uh, I, I hear you. I think he's definitely one of the top three, five specimens in the draft, but what he is as a football player at this moment, I don't know if he's a top three or five player at this moment. That, that's what I would probably back that up with. The football playing hasn't caught up to right. the traits. Right. But those gifts are special. They're, they're there. They're right. there. They're like pretty the, special. The, the bend and to be 247 and run 444 and have a 10 yard split that is in a race with um, Xavier, uh, uh, Xavier Worthy, right? I, I mean, the, the, that's, that's, that is eye popping. There's no doubt about that. Here's another one for you I'll throw out just because we're sitting here. Uh, Braden Fisk, Florida State. Another right. one where I'd go, his his good is phenomenal. It's like, oh my gosh, how explosive, how quick. Oh my gosh, he shot through that gap. What a play. His bad is like, is literally like a movie where the center and the guard take him down the field for 15 yards and he's on his back. I mean, so that, that was another one where it's like, yeah, I see some good stuff, but ooh, there's some stuff that really scares me. Uh, and he he would be one of those that I'd throw in there as far as hard to evaluate how to project it goes going forward. It is because he's a, a movement skills like one incredible game, gifted. Right, he will have some of the shortest arms for any defensive tackle in the NFL the day he walks into an NFL field. I almost feel like he needs to be an edge. Like stand up, up and linebacker, down, kinda, move right. him everywhere, and just right. let him be a. Instead of like he I, he can't play D tackle the first year in the NFL. I Man, know that. that which is, that is crazy. It, it's tricky with that body because I know it, you think D tackle. I know. I think he's athletic enough to he's almost very, do like what the Rams have and the hope ho, 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 Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the kid from Brown who's yeah. three hundred and five pounds yeah. who plays stand up linebacker yes. and you're, right? he kind of looks different. I I just right. I feel like maybe that's where you almost try him out early on. Any other ones that jump out to you as far as guys that you looked at that were like you know hey it's hard to I like them I'm just not sure how it's going to translate whatever any of that. There's a couple I think and you know players that I really like like Kamari Laster is a weird one right the uh-huh. corner from Georgia right. He's always in the hip pocket of receivers. He's tough. He's physical. We just don't see a lot of corners that run in the four sixes playing in the NFL. We, I, like, say what you want. You could hate testing, analytics, numbers. It's my argument all the time. The only one that really comes, and there's a few, but Tremaine Johnson was one. And you have to play, and he fe- the wheels fell off the bus pretty quick. Really he quick. Was 29, it was over. Really quick. So and he was on a team that played zone at first with Jeff Fisher and the Rams, so he yes. got to hide a little bit. Right. So that would – I like Lassiter. I think he's built a little different, but you kind of go, are you maybe a safety? I, I, I think so. I feel like with him and Enos Rakestraw, that's kind of how I feel the same about both of them. Yeah. They're going to be better – and I feel the same way about the kid from Iowa. Dej- oh, Dej- Cooper Dej- Dejean. You could I, do everything with him, I think. I think they're better yeah. like safety hybrid type of players, and I don't trust them on the outside covering some of the, the top corners in the sport. And I think your point is the point. That's why I'm not as high on Terry on Arnold. I yeah. like Terry on Arnold. I want him on my team. I don't want him outside playing corner man to man against Jamar Chase. Right. Guys that run four or five, to your point, or about you even said four or six, but like guys who run four or five are not elite shut down man to man corners. You look through time, that's usually high four threes, four four flat, four two nine, four three one. That's what those type of guys run. You know, that that would scare me about the that group of guys we just talked about there. I'll give you one more. Did yeah. you watch 
Kingsley Suamatia, the tackle from yeah, BYU. Yeah, sure, yes. A lot of projection right. there. Right. Five-star recruit, yep. goes to Oregon, transfers to BYU, plays on both sides. Yep. I mean, looks like an offensive lineman. When they ask him to climb and pull, he moves really well. Yeah. The hands and the pass sets come out so low, and right. you don't know if you're going to get a punch to the face mask a punch to the thighs, like they're just flying in forty different directions. He's got a lot of things to like. I think he and he does because he, he's gift. Once again, he is gifted. He is gifted, and he's big, and he's powerful, and yeah, he can move. Yep. I think he's. I think for me, he was a guard. He kind of has the girth I, I of think, one. I think I, that's where I would trust it. Plus, I think like guard at least at first, and then he can kind of work on mechanics right. and things that he needs to work on to maybe become a tackle a little later. It eliminates uh, his def- his deficiencies. His defic- that's what because I mean. Because when they had him at tackle and uh, they would set him really wide, mm-hmm. they'd have like a guy in a seven or a nine. He didn't understand like playing with a wider base. It was like a very narrow angle, and Definitely. then if the hands miss, it's over on the it inside. Was, it was over. He but opened it, himself up for two way exactly. goes. He was that's what that's why I, when I went, I, I go, he's not ready for tackle. Right. I wrote, I think, in my notes, and I don't have my other notebook where I have all my old linemen in, but I think I wrote like, hey, I think he could do tackle one day, but for right now, he's a guard until he figures some things out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I I did like him. He was one of the guys that. Now, I didn't put him on my honorable mentions, or I had a long list of guys, but he would have been the next guy up that I would probably would have brought up. I have him 56th overall, kind of that That's second round where I develop, yeah, 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 right. development guy. Right. All right, we'll keep that. asking me anything going. Yep. This one from Nate Hillman. Every year, nearly 50% of the first round picks bust. What prospects towards the top of the draft have the lowest floors? Ooh. We had the quarterback combo. Yep. Where there's concern there. Is there anybody that you think the public just loves and you're like, man, there's more concern there than people are letting on? You brought up Terry on Arnold, which was interesting. Terry on Arnold is definitely one of the ones that I would throw in that list, right? I keep seeing him somewhere in the 20s, drafted, late yep. teens. Sometimes, you know, he's the second corner off the board. Again, I love the football player, but... Yeah, he was a safety recruit. Did you know I, that? Well, that, that to me is I'd want him as a nickel safety yeah. type of guy. Yeah. That's what I want him at. But that that to me is not a top twenty or twenty five pick or or you know even really a first rounder in my opinion. Um, all right, so we talked about him. I think we kind of hit some of these guys on just like again, Chop Robertson. I could see being that guy. Yeah. Right. Where it, it could be like, whoa, that floor is low for sure. All athlete. Uh, yep. All athlete. Right. Just don't know how it, the size and, and everything else about his game is going to translate. Um, trying to look at here some more of the just low floor guys. I'm trying to look at names that, that pop to me in a lot of ways. Listen, uh, mm, no, I was going to say trying to think of just the you know I'm trying to keep it with the top guys that we talk about you know yeah could he's in my head with Cooper DeGene I don't know if I feel that way about him I think Cooper DeGene his floor actually I don't think is that low because you know what you know can do the, with him exactly. if the corner I don't know if doesn't the ceiling work out. is that high yeah. right I just I feel like the floor is actually you know, in a good spot there. I'll give um, you one. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Amarius Mims, okay. who I love. Mm-hmm. I have him 17th I, that's overall. Fair. I was going to go to the tackles thing when I was him and hawing there. Mims, he was a one-year starter this year, yeah. and he missed time with ankle tightrope surgery. I love everything about Amarius Mims. The character, the film, the pass pro, he's the size of two humans. Yeah. You have to get around two humans to yeah. get around him. No. I think the run blocking is still a work in progress. Definitely a work in progress. Yeah, I was a little Just getting dis- lower and firing yeah. off the ball, but things you go, that's coachable. We can do that. But can he make it through an NFL season? I hear you. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I truly have no idea. I hear you. He so, got unlucky with that injury last year, yeah. the guy falling on his leg. Right. But I, I hear you. When you're I that think, big, though, it I happens. Think one of the things I'm learning over the last – I would say two to three weeks is the O lineman thing. Some teams have them very highly valued, and I think some teams don't have them as valued quite as highly as I think we all think they do, right? You know, especially the tackle group. I think the tackle group is guys like you, me, whatever, the draft pundits, all that, we all see the the potential, ooh, the size, the look, it's all there. Yeah. We're very much through the prism of pass protection and all that. Uh, I do think there's some teams out there that where I look at these guys and go, oh, they're definite first rounders, blah, blah, blah. There's no doubt about it. You know, I think there's some teams out there that are a little bit like, uh, how good are these tackles? I'm not sure I feel good about all of them, right? 
I think the two that I constantly get that everybody feels comfortable about is just all and Latham. Right. Those are the two, I, and then everybody else is kind of like, eh, I like, this, I'm not sure about. I get that, that with Fashan. So, I get Olu Fashan who's the most I get like cold feet on like uh like it's a little all over the place with Fashanu. Yeah, and I like Fashanu yeah, a lot. Like right. he, there's not a lot of guys have the length and can move like that on an island to tackle and mm-hmm. he's a late bloomer to football so I give him a little I bit more you. of a curve right. than other guys. Right. Um but he's definitely one that I find that the the NFL is a little hot and cold. Like with. he can go in the 20s and I'd be like I was kind of prepared for that. He can go top 10 and I'd be like I get why you would take him in the top I, 10. I, I think there's that right. big of a different a difference there yes. in this and through the league. So that'll be an interesting one to kind of see as we, as we go throughout here. All right, the next question here uh, evaluating prospects. This is from 1987 HLW. When you're evaluating a player, how many games do you try to watch, and do you take stats into account or just your expert eye? Love the pod from the UK. I look at stats a little. I do. I usually, like, when I look at a game, I, I usually, like, I have a player, I pull up, uh, I have a few things in front of me, and then I pull out, I do pull up his stats for the year, right? Not necessarily to look at the stats, more to go, wait, who are the teams I want to see him play against? Right? Yeah. That's more. I don't go. Oh, he had five sacks in that game. I gotta watch that game. I don't go. And then they go. Oh, it's against Southeast Northwest Louisiana, <laughs> Monroe, Missouri, California State. A&M. Oh, I don't care about that one. So I'm not gonna watch the five sacks. I don't care. Right. So I'm a little bit of a three game guy. That's what I usually try to do. Like, That's the standard. Three games. Yeah. Try to spread it out throughout the year. Right, I try to go one somewhere in the first part of the year, the middle part of the year, and the end of the year. I try to do that for the most part. That's technically, I mean, that's kind of my my formula for for more times than not. I use numbers when I'm trying to like figure out a problem that's a little bit deeper. Like Chris Jenkins from Michigan, right? Yeah. He just doesn't have pass rush production, and I really like the player. Yeah. But then you go in and go like, why is his pass rate, rush rate, like win rate, so much lower than everyone else's? And you try to dive into, okay, what is he being asked to do? Mm-hmm. Like not all defenses are built the same in yeah, terms of what you, right. how you can get production. Right. So tr- trying to figure out problems yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, I think that's a fair uh, way to do it. Something that made me like McCarthy more, I used the filter where I watched all of his third and sevens and longer. Mm. And he was really good in those situations. And I was like, man, that's what the NFL is like. So that made me a little higher on McCarthy than where I was. So things like that. Yeah, Situ- right. Situations. Situations, yeah. And I think it's better that numbers are, are getting that way rather yeah. than like, you had 10 sacks, you're a great player. Yeah, no, no. You got to take into the, you know, the context matters. That, that, that's what I always say. That's the, that's the one thing Amin and I always say. Context does matter with this type of conversation, and you got to try to piece that together, right? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's usually, for me, three games – and I honestly, I probably usually always start with a, whether it's that day or early on in the process, let me watch 40 plays of the guy, yeah. like whether it's a POA tape or whatever, just so I have a feel for See it. See move, right. what he looks I just like. Wanna, so I could talk to it and just go, oh, yeah, I like him, blah, blah, blah. And then I dive into it later with the, the actual game film. Yeah. Graham Bailey says, uh, how much does a coach have, say does a coach have in the draft? So Jim Schwartz at my Browns, will he be asked to look at the best defensive line slash linebacker prospects and asked who does he like or not at all? No, he will be a part of that conversation. He will. Now, does he get to be the end all be all? No. Right. But I think where it goes into is this is where staff meetings, things like this happen to where, hey, they get in the meeting, the defensive coaches are in there and where they can have an effect is, hey, Jim Schwartz, Hey, he kind of likes the guy that's number five on the board met better than the guy that's at you know two and three, right? And they'll have constructive conversations, and he'll get to a state his case, show film, do whatever else to where, you know, again, if he's sitting there and and uh, Andrew Berry, oh, that's a good point. Oh, you're oh, okay, okay. And then there's a few other defensive coaches that start to go that. That's where okay, the front office might go. Okay, yeah, you know what. I, I don't disagree with you there. We're gonna we're gonna tinker with the board here. Okay, we will make this guy now the second guy and drop the other guys down a little bit. So he's not gonna be on the, be all on draft day going. I want that guy, but he's already have gonna put out all his thoughts about what he likes, what he sees for the position, and then what guys in this class he feels embody that right, and that will definitely be taken to an account for sure. Kind of a follow-up here. Like, you go through that scenario. Is the draft board already made by the GM before the coaches enter the process? So basically, like, if a coach, you know, 
really likes a guy, how much leeway does he have to move him up? I or think down? it's it's made, but the, not like set in stone. Right. Right. Uh, you know that they, they submit grades. They, Scouts submit their grades. They, and yeah. So 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 early on in the process, yeah, the grades on the board, how it's all graded there, what the board looks like, is purely on the scouting department and the GM. It's really all that, and it's probably not even all the way GM at that point. It's probably scouting department, other guys, blah 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 blah, and then like we get towards the end of the season and the GM starts to go, oh, wait, no, I've watched enough of this guy. Hold on, let me move a few things, right? And then it becomes, oh, the season's over. All right, we looked at our own team. We evaluated our own guys. Hey, quarterback coach or D-line coach or O-line coach, hey, watch these 10 guys in the draft. Kind of tell us what you think. We're going to have a meeting about O-linemen next week, blah, 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 blah. And then that will continue into – Oh, okay. I've heard the O line. Oh, let me go back into the, the the boardroom there. Okay, I had the O line like this, but man, our O line coach said this. Our offensive coordinator said this, right? I've been watching more and more. Okay, now I'm gonna you know change the order a little bit, right? And I, it's a work in progress to where it's probably really coming into shape and like right now. I tell people that's that what all people the time. don't realize. It's people later think than you they, think. I know everybody thinks it was done like a month ago, and I'm like, no. Like all the big time head coaches, offensive coordinators, they're they're just got done with evaluating everybody in the draft just a few days ago. Like it's they had free it's, agency. Before it, that. Exactly, it's not been that long here. So now it's all in the ooh, what's the value of this guy? What let's try to predict what this team's gonna do? Blah blah blah. And it's all coming together here in these last two weeks is really when it starts to to kind of clear up the position coaches i talk to they just get lists assigned to them yes. so if i'm like hey did you watch this guy sometimes yeah, they're like, he, like yeah, he wasn't he was on, my on my list, list. Right. or he, right. yeah i had him right so right. it is very they divided spread it out, out they know? really do yeah. so yeah they don't they, they don't, might ask they might give uh 20 receiver li- or a, 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 there might be 20 receivers on a list but he might only give like the wide receiver coach 10 of them exactly. he might give the quarterback coach another five of them right and maybe even other position too just to get different thoughts exactly. and different people to see it uh but yeah it is it's not every position coach sees every guy at their position and knows everything about it this one from orion Chuzzlewit. hey guys the dac contract situation in dallas seems to be getting weird how many quarterback needy teams in the top 10 do you think would trade their first plus maybe a bit extra and pay him what he wanted if they had the chance Ooh. I don't feel like – I don't think there's any teams that are going to do that. Right. The Falcons sign Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Because that's I'm, the one that I'm, comes I'm, top of I know. Line. I'm looking at the top ten right now, and I'm going, wait, all right, so the Jets, there, no. There's not a team. The I mean, the Bears, no. The Falcons, no. I mean, the Titans, no. I think they're more intrigued by the potential in the future and what Will Levis can be rather than – Wait, we know what Dak Prescott is, right? So no, I don't. I don't Not see in the top any of them. ten. Not the, my the top answer 10. would be the Raiders at thirteen. Sure, right. That's it. That, that that might you know that's where you could start talking about that a little bit. Surely, uh, but you know, Dak is I think a guy that again a lot of teams would like, definitely. But do they want to trade away a first round pick and? Oh, we're going to pay Dak 50 something million dollars a year for Dak? No, that, that, that's not what people want. You know, Dak would have a market if he was a total free agent and trading wasn't involved and all that. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think it's like No, I don't think Dak Prescott is viewed as a slam dunk top 10 quarterback by everybody in football and therefore that's not going to, you know, put that type of trade demand up there for him. Right. And you have to factor in like owners coming to this equation. So when you're selling this plan, you're passing on the cost-effective first-round quarterback. And exactly, then you're telling the owner, right. I need $120 million in cash because we got to pay the guy and he's a quarterback. Right. It's a very difficult thing to do de- when you're picking in the top 10. Definitely. Very Let alone difficult. a guy like Dak Prescott. And most teams are going to be thinking about – got to think about the political nature of that conversation. Right. And with, even with a guy like Dak Prescott, right, who I think is good and you can win a Super Bowl with. I'm going to say that. I've been saying that. But he's not Mahomes, and he's not Josh Allen, he's not Joe Burrow. That's not who he is. But he's damn good, right? My point was – I forgot for a second what my point was going to be there. Uh, but, no, I, I think my, my point where I was going there is that is he's damn good, right? Um, gosh, 
I've totally forgot. Forget it. That's all right. It'll come back later. Yeah. I don't know where I, I had something in my head and I read a question as it was talking and I totally blanked out and forgot. And I can't remember what the hell I was going to say now. You're trying to run without catching the ball first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This one from Alaskar Sadiqe. Is Jim Harbaugh's Chargers almost a shoe in to draft an offensive lineman regardless of any trade down stand pat scenario? I mean, it, it definitely seems. I mean, again, when I hear like, you know, Joe Alt at six to the chart, like I just go, well, that, that's the total. Chargers Jim Harbaugh type of move. He's That's what I would it. expect. Yeah. I mean, I would expect that. Let's start with wait. The same formula that got me to the Super Bowl as a 49ers head coach, the same formula that got me to the national championship exactly. game is, is dominate up front. So yeah, I, I you know, again, I expect it to be that. I do. I, I don't I guess I look at it and go, you know, the receiver thing's definitely in the conversation, right? They do need it. Right, but I just don't look at him going Jim Harbaugh making it all about the receiver and having right. to deal with that as a top ten or twelve pick. I just don't see them going that route. When they pick at thirty-seven and sixty-nine, and you can get a receiver, you at 37 definitely or 69. could. That's where I mean, I look at them a lot of the times, and I saw like what Roman Wilson was saying this weekend, and I want to go like, damn, yeah, I could see, I could definitely see them taking Roman Wilson at the top of the second round or somewhere in the second round and going with that. Like you said, again, he didn't. They had Michael Crabtree already when he took over the 49ers. That wasn't part of his drafting. Yeah. And they were all about big, physical, dominate that way. I just, yeah, I think that's what, what I expect from John Harbaugh and the Chargers. Jim so Harbaugh. What me. do you think of the combo of them drafting a left tackle like Alt when they have Slater at left tackle? How does that conversation work out? Or does it make you, because I think they're a sleeper for Latham at five. Ooh. Like I, a real, so I, I like Latham better than all. I I don't, right. but I think that there's a world where Latham is the first tackle taken, and it's to the Chargers at five, and he's a right tackle. Gosh, he is. I I love Latham, and he right. kind of fits what Harbaugh loves. Big like, Mauler, right? Grip right. strengths for days. Right. Move people move, out of the way. Exactly right, right. Right. His pass protection is is still a work in progress, but when it's good, it's I think it's maybe the best in the draft. Like the way it looked at the end of the year, I went, it was phenomenal. That's what I said to Ahmed last week or two weeks ago when we did the rankings. I went, you watch the, you know, uh, the Georgia game, the Auburn game, the Michigan game. Hey, he's a wall. Nobody can even get close to him. Right. And, and the pass protection and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I hear you. But, you know, again, I, I sometimes think like a guy like Joe Walt, right? He's a good athlete. Like right. He's going to have no problem going right. to right tackle yeah, and making that adjustment. Right. Exactly right. So, so I don't think it's as big of a, a, we a concern can't take in like, the NFL right, as, right. as maybe sometimes us guys make it out to be. A couple Giants questions here. MRBX74, if the Giants are hell bent on picking a quarterback, what do you think about them picking Bo Nix, a quarterback? that the divide is wide between the draft professionals and former pro quarterbacks. We touched on this a little bit. Yep. The question is, with if they're going to take Bo Nix, do we think Bo Nix is there at 47? I am not confident I don't in that. think so. I don't I, think so. I don't think so. You know, again, I, 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 there's there's a part of me that still thinks Bo, Mick, Bo Nix can go in the first round here. Right. I don't know that for sure. I haven't, like, had that – talk or convo with anybody so I certainly am not trying to say it through through that prism um but damn I, I I look at him as a first round talent for sure and again I'll say what I said you know when you talked about you know May with the Giants and all of that I just I it just doesn't seem like a Giants type of move right for a team that's got you know holes everywhere we're just going to make it all about the quarterback the quarterback the quarterback the quarterback and I know Daniel Jones isn't perfect but like I said he's you know to me one of the lesser issues on the football team and you can win with Daniel Jones right it's got to be yeah they got to be able to support him and they couldn't support him throughout most of his career all right, this one, uh, staying in the NFC from Colin O'Grady who would you rather have at number nine for the Bears Byron Murphy Jared Verse or Dallas Turner Byron Murphy, Jared Verse, or Dallas Turner. I would want, I would want um, our man from Alabama, Dallas Turner. Yeah, I would go Just with take that. the freakiest guy. I would, yeah. I would. I, I think he's that, perfect for that. It's, it's again, it's Ibraflus. It's based in Seattle scheme. It's wide nine. It's don't think about much other than just running to the quarterback. I think that fits him right. Verse, I like verse. I don't know if I see top 
tier, like, ooh, I think he could be a 14 sack a year type of edge guy. I'm not sure I see that because he's a really good player. I really like Jared Verse, but I'm not sure I see that all the way. I love me some Byron Murphy. I do. You know, I I, I think of them de-tackle, right? They got the kid from Florida we talking about, right? That's coming up. Yeah. Uh, the ranks, and then who? They got some other D tackles there. I got to pull it up. I feel like they got to go took, to pass they rusher. They took two last year, so it's, yeah. yeah, that I would agree. They need they would take an edge guy in that scenario. Hey, let me just throw something yeah. crazy at you, and there's you know pretty close to a zero percent chance, but just because it would be interesting, yeah. they re-signed uh, their great corner in Jalen Johnson, right? Right. Is it just nuts to consider Quinion Mitchell there Ooh. and go, you know what? We go against the Lions passing attack. We think Jordan Love's pretty good. We know Kevin O'Connell's passing attack's really good. We just want shut down outside corners. I, that is interesting to it's me. It's probably unlikely. They play just, a ton of man. Because the player is really good. The player is worthy of that pick for sure. For my for my I, I think again, what I've said about Quinion Mitchell, right? And the more time that's gone on, I've kind of said he's not only my man crush, I think he is my top-rated defensive player if I were to really you know, like, put like a gun a to board, my head yeah. and you made me do it, right? My, my, my thing I keep saying, with it, if he was a, the, a cooler emblem in college, like in Ohio State, or he would yeah. be a top-five pick, right? I look at him on film and go, I think he's better than Derek Stingley, who was picked at number three for right. the Houston Texans. I think his film is every bit argu- is up there with Sauce Gardner. And it was a surprise when Sauce went when he did. Exactly. Like right. people thought he was going early, but not, not in the at top four, five. maybe. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. But Sauce, I think, between his measurables, what he did at the combine, and then, oh, I got to see him play against Alabama and all that. That helped him out so much that, that I think he that looks boosted him up. He looks the part too. Mitchell just is missing that part. Of whether wait, I didn't get to play against a, enough big time competition, so that scares yeah. people a little bit. And my school wasn't big time, and I think that leads it to a guy that I look at as a top five pick that'll probably be top ten or twelve just because of the school he was at. And he kicked everyone's ass at the Senior Bowl, like, and that was a good group of receivers out there. He kicked everyone's ass. Hey, so I don't really worry about the competition. He is, I think, yeah. a freak show. Yeah, I mean, an absolute freak show. And back to earlier, you know, obviously the Bears took Gervin Dexter, who was really good last year, yep. and Zach Pickens even in round three. So oh, they, they have right. some depth at yep. D tackle, where you wonder if they would, you know, need to take a premium guy. I, like I'm Murphy. trying to get back on the internet right now. That's um, always a fun adventure because, like, I they want my new password, and I can't even pull up the damn roster right now. So I'm trying to do that as I do a podcast. Uh, which is really annoying me right so now. So here's their their corner group. Of course, Jalen Johnson is the dude right there. But then you have Kyler Gordon, probably going to play in the slot. And then there are other outside corners, a mix of Tyreek Stevenson, Jalen Jones, Terrell Smith. That's that. So that would probably be why they don't go Quenya Mitchell. Because they like the depth of the group. And I think, you know. Yeah. Hey, the kid Tyreek Stevens had a damn good rookie year. I mean, he he's he's worthy of being that guy over there. Yeah. Right. So that's where I I guess I do look it's, at the, the pass rusher if I'm going to choose one of the I, I would think they'll go pass rusher or they add to the receiver group, which is I think a, a common thought that's out there. All right. So well, let's get into the Jets, of course, because I'm here. Israel DMS seven asked if Roma Dunze, Brock Bowers, and Troy Fatanu are all on the board when the Jets pick at ten. Who would you take? Oh man, I have to speak about this every week, so I actually want your thoughts man, on this. This is a good one. That's here. a tough trio. It is a tough trio. Gosh, you know, Fountain though would be. Like the right guy, big picture wise. That's what I always say. Right, because he he could start at left guard this year over John Simpson. He's that good, and then he's going to be a, your long term piece on the offensive line when everybody leaves. He's he's a good safe. I mean, he's one of the safest picks of the draft, without right? a doubt. Can tackle. He can play tackle or guard. Right. Can do either one. Right. I look at them in the Jets and go, wait, we're really going to go, hey, like, oh, Troy, we, we think that, you know, Tyrone Smith and, and Morgan Moses are definitely going to be healthy for the year, right? So I look at that and go, I think that's the, the play for the big picture, right? But if you're in it for right now, this second, you know, we want to win it this year, I feel like Brock Bowers would probably be the one I'd go with. He's my highest ranked player of the three. Yeah. So that goes to your equation. Bowers is phenomenal. He's unbelievable. I was expecting a lot when I turned the film on, and when I turned the film on, I was 
pleasantly pleased to to go, wow, this guy's worth everything I thought he was, right. what I heard about him, everything. Like really, really like the football player. And then of course them, hey, you know, yeah, they're, they they do want to run the ball. Rodgers is good at play action. You play him, you know, off of Brees Hall in that running game, and you know, there's there's a lot there to like for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I, I it feels like they're gonna go for the now pick over the big picture pick. That's I've heard rumblings of that. Yeah. You line it up where you look at it and go, okay, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams on the outside, Brock Bowers in the slot, and he could do a lot more than that. With Rodgers under center, that offensive line, and Brees Hall in the backfield. Right. I mean, where does that offense stack up for you in the that, NFL? That's that's up there. If everybody's there. healthy, which is the big, you know. But And then if you flip it, Roma Dunze on the outside, Mike Williams on the outside, Garrett Wilson in the slot. But then, like, I always call it the eating your vegetables, the Fatanu pick. Yeah. It's like, like Brock Bowers feels like dessert, where it's like, man, this is awesome. Like, it's great, but... You know, we might have some problems later because this is the route we went. Yeah, it's a very I, difficult situation. It it is a difficult situation. I feel like I'm more of the 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 Brock Bowers or take the tackle yeah. part of the conversation because I do think Bowers still, you know, short term yes and long term kind of fits both. Right, right. It's just a great helps player. run game, helps pass game, helps it all. Great player, exactly right. Definitely was blown away. I, I yeah, I'm Brock Bowers the one another one I go. You know, where is he going to go? You know, who's going to take – if the Jets don't take him at 10, where does he end up? Is somebody going to make a move, make a play for him? Could be. You know, I think he's that type of talent that somebody would do that for. Yeah, he's he's pretty special. One more Jets question here from Amiri Jets. Can you guys talk about some offensive line prospects? More importantly, Taliza Fuanga and Troy Fatanu. Chris has them as guards in the NFL, so I don't know how I'd feel if the Jets take one at 10. Love the CNC duo. So you did just say Fatanu could play tackle yes. in a pinch. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people can. are doing it the way you did, where they stack him as a guard, right. but they know he has tackle flexibility. Uh, talk about Fuanga a little bit. That's my favorite. One of my favorite linemen in the draft. I think he's the best run blocker in the draft, Definitely. if not tied with a couple people. I but mean, when you just said, and it's every uh, zone blocking, man blocking, no, all of it. It's real. Yeah, it's real. Like yeah. he, to me, again, no, what I would again, another one where I would say one of the safest picks in the draft, right? When you talk about it, just because I do, he could play tackle. I think he could do it. I definitely think he's a better guard. Like I look at him and go. He could be one of the best guards in football right away, like a Quentin Nelson type of thing, where you go, whoa, rookie year, right? Quentin Nelson, I think, was like the sixth pick of the draft. And within like the fifth game of the year, we were like, he's one of the best guards right. in football yeah. already. And I feel like Fuwaga has got a chance to be that type of guy. Yeah, he's he's a difference maker. But I'm with you. I, I put him right tackle only and, you know, with upside at guard. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to play out on an island all the time. He gets guys cross his face a lot definitely so definitely he's not he's not built he's built to be a big time guard i don't see him being you know he I can make had, it happen a tackle but i don't know if he can be big time i didn't get the feet all the time right that was the big thing right for me all right before we uh close the book on this one today one more jets thought new uniforms dropped i like what we've been sitting here what yeah. do you think they kind of went back to more simple, closer to the 80s. I like this a lot. I think the color palette's a lot better. The only thing, the only, and this is very nitpicky of me, I love the white face mask. I don't know about the metallic helmet mm. with the more dull old school uniform. Oh, I think I, I have to you. see it you, on the you, field. You, okay, yeah. I would have went with more matte You went with the old, the old dull 1980s yeah. Ken O'Brien Jets but helmet th there. I think they wanted to keep something modern, Yeah, and they chose the helmet. It, it, probably, it, it probably looks great on the field. I, I would think it pops, right? That's the thought process It's a pretty there. cool pretty cool uniform. It's a good looking you uniform. Know, I, what I, I love like the look of uh, the green jersey with the white pants. That's the best one. I like the green jer the green pants with the white jersey, too. Right. right? I mean, that that's old school Jets. That's how I grew right. up. The like Altoon one. is what I think of right. when I see it. Exactly yes, right. That's, that's heyday Phil yeah. Sims versus the New York Jets <laughs> yeah, and all yep. that in the preseason. Uh, I don't love their all black uniform. I don't, um, but but you know, I get it. If you're gonna have an alternate, Everyone it is a cool it. look, green and yeah. black, and you know, all black certainly looks good. But uh yeah, I'm 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 kinda digging the Jets unis right now. The bar was low, but they upgraded. Uh, they did. They upgraded. <laughs> they upgraded. The bar was significantly low. Um <laughs> we got let's see, Jets uniform. Will Rogers stop being a distraction to his football team? That'll be interesting to see as we go further here. It's right? the offseason. How of the could Jets they not again. be? Uh, they, they're, they're this. Listen, how is he going to uh, on every podcast just dive into every conspiracy? And they theory feel like they're hours long. Uh, I admittedly don't listen to them. I only see the clips. It's dicey. 
It is, uh, it is. It is definitely a little strange right now. I, 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 they, the Jets cannot be comfortable with all of the talking that that Aaron Rodgers yeah, is doing right now. I think they're ready for just actual games yeah. to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for the guy right. that was like, we need to get all the distractions right. out of the building. It's right. tough when you say that and then you kind of go the other way. Yeah, but yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. They will be one of the most interesting teams in football, and I don't say that because I do their pregame oh, I know. show. I hope they stay healthy. They could win we can, 11 games. I they, want to see them max yeah. their potential here. And then they could all bottom out again. No doubt about it. You just it. don't know. No doubt. That was a lot of fun. We covered a lot hey, of stuff. you're the man. Thanks Dude, so much, as here. always. I I'll be back again. Hey, you'll be back Next again. week. I know. So yeah. we, we got some questions we didn't we didn't answer. We'll yeah. get to some of those, okay? I know there's some things there, and there's some good ones out there about some other teams that we didn't get to. Uh, but we're going to continue down this road. Definitely Wednesday, going to hit a little on, like, safeties and linebackers, which is not one of the most, you know, <laughs> sexy groups, groups of, the, of yeah. this. Like, you know, I, I, said, I said to the PFF guys the other day, I don't know. Are we going to see a linebacker drafted in the second? second round i don't even know maybe probably one or right two. but it's like one yeah. or two right safety you know the traditional safety definitely i don't think is happening in the first round i don't is cooper dejean gonna dejean gonna sneak into the first he'll, I, go, he'll go in the first you round, think I he think. will i think he will i think he's just too good of a defensive back okay that's right. the thought of like uh, like you know, like I don't see how Green Bay would pass on him. Mm. Just, they, they have a need. Yeah, they have he a can do a little bit of everything for yeah, them on the yeah, back end. I, I know they like that athletic profile. I'll be interested in him because he's right. one of those ones I almost feel like everybody. We're all oh, he's the end of the first, end of the first, yeah. and then when it gets down to it, people are gonna be like, oh wait, we gotta take this position right here, and he Before ends up on gone. the board in the top right. of the second. Right. Uh, but it, but be interesting nonetheless. But we're gonna hit that safeties, linebackers Wednesday. Break it down. Ahmed's back in the fold. Connor, thanks for driving the ship as always you the man keep the shirts tight keep the guns big all right please do that you the man uh connor is getting married in like a month so he's got a lot he's got a busy life to do here he's got to deal with the mets and getting married i don't know we'll see how that goes (laughs) all right everybody be good you know where to find us send in the questions we'll be back wednesday peace out clap it up Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off-season, but it's never the off-season on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Fareed are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions, of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings, and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.